Nice. Out. Now. Game. Game. Greetings, dear listeners, and welcome to our podcast. My name is Jason, I'll be your DM for tonight, and the players with me tonight are... Cora. Hi. Richard. Hello. Dia. Ah, ah, me, hello. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. And Andreas. What a great big hullabaloo. <laughs> Indeed. So yeah, peeps, it's been a while since we played and... Shit, uh... where are my notes? <laughs> <laughs> It's been a while since we played, and uh, I'm afraid, the, you know, the one time I took notes for this, I seem to have lost them just before the uh, session started, and I just can't remember what happened last time. So, uh, can anyone remind me, please? Yes. Uh, Dorn found himself at the end of uh, two swords. Um, he disengaged from the dwarves holding them uh, to his neck and uh, stepped back through the illusion into the cave entrance. Uh, We tried to talk to them, and they asked about the poison we used on their sorcerer. Decla tried to disarm one, Marjorie shot one with her crossbow, and he put down his weapon. When Kasni tried to take it away, he picked it back up. The fight's not important. I think the important things are worth worth noting are that we uh, tied them up again. Did we take any particular extra precautions? Because we tied them up previously. I think we hog-tied them and, like, yeah. Did it better, basically. Yeah, you actually took uh, time and effort because turns out they're actual trained professionals. Who would have thought? Mm. Well, not the people who defeated them twice. <laughs> <laughs> Kasni used straight water to bubble uh, his head in water because he can breathe water so that he could go back into the poison gas room. Uh, it didn't work perfectly, but it enabled him to um, leave with... Quite a bit of gold, not a significant portion of what was there, but quite a lot, without putting anyone else in danger of the uh, of the poison. We filled the bags of holding because um, uh, out of game we discovered that bags of holding can actually hold a shit ton of gold. Yeah, I think we had like eight grand in total. You did. You got eight grand out of the cave and you, there were the two grand from the... From the loan. It's disappointing considering what we could have got, but we were just aiming to get... 2000 originally so basically yeah that's mostly all that happened the rest was sp- spent planning on what you were gonna do uh, we ended on uh, Dawn asking Marjorie if she has uh, any family nearby so Marjorie do you have any family nearby I do sort of uh, well, sort of. I would say, well, I say sort of because the nearest family is probably about a week away uh, except Mickey who's in the local jail <laughs> well, yes, but I'm thinking of disowning him anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Mickey. Oh yeah, you have to get Mickey out. <laughs> no, I'm sure he it's... clearly wasn't involved in the robbery. It's fine. There's no uh, no heat on him. It's called building character. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I have I have uh, my. What did Mickey do to get on Marjorie's shit list? <laughs> <laughs> Fail a bank robbery. <laughs> yeah, he got caught. I mean, fair. <laughs> <laughs> I anyway, I have sorry. a I have a grand uh a, a grandson or great grandson I'm not sure grandson <laughs> a grandson it gets hard when you're this old okay uh his name is Mert he lives in a little fishing village uh about a week east of here called uh, Nearpart that doesn't sound very near to me <laughs> <laughs> yes I'm sorry you. it had to be made it was a low hanging fruit <laughs> yes it was. Thank you. But uh, I'm, I'm sure we could hide out there for a little bit. Well, how about we send our companions off to there now, and then we can head back into town and meet up there. So if it's a week away, they're not going to want to... We're not going to... And Del says, um, yeah, we actually have our own hiding spot outside of outside of town. Anyways, he's, um, yeah, Cast, yes, you, you instinctually put your hands in your pocket and you notice a stack of letters in your pocket. Oh, yeah, bugger, I forgot about this. Um, <clears throat> uh, Del, Del, are you going back to the post office at any point? Uh, I might, just in the morning, you know, to pretend that everything's fine. Uh, could you take these in? Like, I mean... Oh, sure, yeah. 
please please post them and I like I like hand her an extra gold or something or whatever for uh, for the postage. Yeah, the postage is like, you know, a few copper. Yeah, I know, but this, this is this is you are doing me a favor. Here's a gold to do the favor. Man, we just stole a bunch of gold. It's fine. <laughs> okay. I appreciate the gesture, but I'm not going to complain and I I put the coin back in my pocket. Keeping your iron hot, I see four four letters to send. That's a uh... Oh, they're not from me. Mm, got a lot of lovers, do you? I mean, again, these aren't from me, but uh-huh. I, I, I do not continue the con- <laughs> the conversation. <laughs> I do not continue the uh, conversation. <laughs> yeah, Del just nods and uh, put, puts them in her coat. So, if you all have stuff to take care of in town, let's get that done with, and then we can head over to my grandson and hide out. Where are we meeting back up, or are we going all around together to? Avoid losing each other. Well, I'd say by this point you're back back at the town. So, uh, did you do you go into town um, together or? Uh... I mean, we we don't go in the conventional route. Aside from Marjorie, we have all been seen together. So, but no one saw us leaving with with the level ones. That's what I'm asking. Oh yeah, yeah. We don't. We won't go back to town with them. We'll be separate. Okay, so they they go ahead then. Yeah. So, you know, a, a few minutes out of town, you uh, hang back while they'll go ahead. Fiola, you catch up with Fiola on the way, who was keeping lookout. She was skulking and being shady because, you know, she's just so shady and I hate her. Uh. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Sure. You do know she's got, like, at least three names, says Kasny, who has at least two. <sighs> <clears throat> Fiola just rolls her eyes as you hand the letters over to Del. Then she walks up to you, well... It was nice seeing you again, I guess. I mean, I guess. No kiss! A kiss for all time's sake? Yeah, what the hell. <laughs> yeah, and she kisses you. Yay, young love! <laughs> I don't think love has much to do with this. Oh, I've love, ta- love comes in all kinds of forms. Fiola just uh, scowls at you. At dawn? No, at the Marjorie. Oh. <laughs> Kasni uh, sh- shapes water from whatever water's left o- on him from his uh, water bubble and, uh, uh, and and shapes it so that it goes on her hair and gets so wet. <laughs> <laughs> and she uh, she uh, she steps away from you and says, "Yep, you've never changed." Well, I wish you good luck. And she uh, turns around and walks away. Petty, kind of hot. I like it. I mean, you know, she does look good wet. <laughs> she does. I say that loud enough so she can hear. Yeah, and she uh, she just tosses her hair over her sh- shoulder and uh, does a bit wi- wide swing with her hips and continues walking. It seems to lack finesse. You would say that because you didn't do it. <laughs> Dawn wasn't seen leaving town, so he's going to go back in the same way. Okay. Did we sneak out as a group? Um, no, they went ahead and you followed the cart. Ah, uh, that was it. Yeah. Dawn will suggest that we retrace the exact routes we each took. Yeah, you do that. Uh, you meet up like a, a street away from the tavern where you're staying. Um, Marjorie, are, uh, you're going, uh, where are you going? Who are you going with? Um, I'll, honestly, I'll just go with whoever seems loneliest. <laughs> uh, loneliest would be, I mean, Dawn's going off on his own, so... Oh, Dawn. Dawn, do you want company? Never. <laughs> um, Cherry creaks up next to you. Dawn sort of pauses, looks at Marjorie, looks at Cherry, and just goes, uh, no, keep an eye on the others for me. Who knows what trouble they might get into. Oh, God, don't go off on your own again. No, Dawn's just going back into town the same way he came out, because he doesn't want to be seen coming back into town if he hasn't been seen going out. Okay, that's fair. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm assuming. I'm assuming Marjorie made most of the way on on Cherry. So yeah, I'm, uh, as if there's any uh, opportunity to not walk, Marjorie will take it. Yeah. Does Cherry have like sort of when you're sitting sitting on him and he's walking? Do, does it sort of lock like rock to from side to side in like a comical way, or or does he have does he have like? You ask if Cherry has gyroscopes. Yes. Basically. <laughs> Cherry's a, a pretty stable ride. It has to be comfortable. I was going to say, we couldn't have it rattling your old bones apart. Exactly. Then I could may as well just walk. Does he have cushions? Well, obviously. It's a chair. Like a, a lounge chair. Ah, right. See, I was sort of seeing him more as like a, a, a chunky metal dining chair. <laughs> yeah, I need to I need to draw up what Cherry looks like. At some oh, point. yeah. Definitely do that. Yes. Could- 
Probably make a 3D model, actually. Anyways, yeah, you meet up, like, a street away from the tavern where you're staying, so... It's still open, like... Like, the bar is closed, but, you know, it's open, so you can go back to your... Uh, the bartender is just cleaning up. And, yeah, as you walk in, uh, he's uh, sort of... Uh, uh, in the at a corner table, uh, poking poking Daniel with the broomstick, and Daniel just sort of wakes up like, "Shit, where am I? Where am I? What's what's?" Dawn what's... goes over to Daniel, and lays a hand and says, "Donny boy, Donny, my good friend, Donny boy, I'm so happy to see you." Ah, uh, we got we got you back, boss. Don't worry. Um, you you it's... had a wild one. You spent a lot of money. Die. That doesn't matter, because we're getting the money to again tomorrow. It's going to be amazing. Yes, I'm sure it is, boss. I'm sure it is. Uh, let's get you to bed now. Um, <laughs> Dawn says, taking him up the stairs and making sure no, to discuss the, money very This is loudly. the first good news I've heard since that fucker that stole my family heirloom got released. Oh, I'm shit. so happy. Out of character, do I know about this? Somebody does! <laughs> oh dear. Dawn, Dawn will continue talking about money around the bartender who's closing down as he takes Daniel off to bed. Because bartenders gossip. Yeah, and Daniel starts singing at some point. It's it's more it's more of a screaming, like Lilica sang better than him. Shame we don't have any more of that sleep poison. <laughs> Dawn gets him into his room and casts sleep on him. Yeah, you do that. Like, uh, you don't even need to cast sleep. He just uh, falls down. He's out. Uh, the minute he's out, Dawn's body language entirely changes into like back into his more natural, irritable. Like, what? What the fuck? Why did I accept this job? God, <laughs> saints, bugger it! What the hell? You're you're in his room. Loot it. <laughs> and but he does he does take note of the um, family heirloom thing, but. If he ever sees Daniel again, he'll ask him about that later. Well, I mean, technically you did see, when you uh, were at his mansion, you did see um, a painting on the wall with, like, uh, his father and another friend and... Uh, uh, yes, and I do remember the... Uh, and my fucking jug! Bars. Mm -hmm. But I don't think Dawn made any connection. Yeah, okay, just... Like, Richard knows, but Dawn I don't think does. Um, Didn't I say out loud that's mine? You did. Okay, oh, you, did you? you? Did. Yeah, I think I did. You said Daniel's definitely Maradanda. It's it's a problem for for another time. It's been a long night. Um, yeah, all, all of you heard this when you came into the casino. Daniel has no volume control, even less so drunk. He also has no filter, even when he's sober. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And after having uh, implanted that idea in the bartender's mind, Dawn suggests we all go to bed. It has been a long ass night hunting down Daniel after he went on that spending spree. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, bartender uh, notices Marjorie but doesn't say anything. So Marjorie, uh, who are you bunking with? Uh, well, uh... I guess Marjorie is known Casney the longest, but might prefer to stay in a room with Decla. I think Decla is the least offensive of all of us. I mean, it's true. <laughs> I was, I was just stay with whoever will have me. Oh, I'm sure at least two people. Not will that have way! Me. God damn it! <laughs> No, she's my Mima. Marjorie, you may take my bed. Thank you. Want to share my bed? <laughs> Cassie says to Dawn. Does he? I don't know if he does. Does he say that? I think he does. <laughs> Do I not have a, a room somewhere else in town that I would normally be staying at? Well, the bog rose. Right. But I guess since I'm already here and you've offered to share my room. That's settled. Marjorie has Dawn's bed. Dawn shares with me. Yep. Sure. There are no objections? Interesting. <laughs> no objections from Dawn? No. Why Why? Why do you think Dawn offered Marjorie his <laughs> Oh, you asshole. <laughs> 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 okay, you uh, go to sleep. Uh, you wake up the next day. About what time do you wake up? It's about four in the morning when you come back. Ah, oh, bugger. That's very late. Um, Probably, like, Dawn will be up by nine at the latest. I mean, we can't, we can't be, we can't sleep in too late because um, eventually Daniel will wake up and 
if he doesn't cause a fuss to get us to come with him, and he, even if he goes on his own, he's gonna, you know, there's gonna be some issues. We can't wake up too late, or we'll get arrested. Well, whenever you wake up, you hear you hear a loud snoring, like sawmill snoring from Daniel's room. So we we need to at least get a long rest. <laughs> Dawn wakes up at nine. I guess Kazni also does, which is not a long rest. That's true. Yeah, there is that. If you want to get your spell slots back, you have to wake up much later than nine. Yeah, we'll have to be in bed till 12 if we want to get spell slots back. Uh, that's fine, that doesn't bother Dawn. Mm-hmm. But yeah, Dawn, you're actually woken up around 8. You hear you hear a voice directly in your ear and it uh, la- launches you awake. And the voice says, Dawn, this is Professor Aranka, Dean of the University. You are invited to a meeting today at noon in my office by request of Karela. You recognize it as a message. Uh, you've probably received a few in your life so far, so you know how it works. Dawn, just like, um, thank you very much for taking the time out of your day to see me, Professor. Um, 25 words. You also know that. All right. Um, yeah, then he just says, um, thank you for agreeing to uh, see me on such short notice. I shall see you at 12. Okay, yeah. And then Dawn puts the knife away that he immediately grabbed when something wakes him <laughs> up from sleep by whispering in his ear and takes a few deep breaths to, like, get his heart rate back down. What, 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 what's, what's, what, what? <laughs> oh, yeah, Kastner, you're woken up by this as well. Yeah, that was my reaction. <laughs> yeah, I'm just narrating for, you know. Uh, something woke me up. Yeah, and uh, Don Don is sitting next to you, knife in hand, looking uh, frazzled. <sighs> uh, shh, shh, Kasni, I stroke the top of his head. He's going, it's just a dream, go back to sleep. I don't believe you. And then I just flop back down on the bed and go back to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dawn immediately starts grooming himself into something, <laughs> like, uh, acceptable. Oh, I'm completely imagining the whole leg in the air. (laughs) 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 Well, you know, gotta bathe yourself. Okay, the ladies, what are you? What are you up to? When when do you get up? Yeah, that's the question. I think uh, having just had an exhausting bank robbery uh, and long nights, uh, this is is a sleeping in kind of day. So probably around noon. And totally not metagaming because I want my spell slots back. Also hit dice, which I think I used all of. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to be asleep for eight hours, you know, it just gotta be, you know, sort of low activity. Or I'm glad you agree with my personal opinion on it. Yeah. In that case, I wake up one hour earlier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you wake up You wake up at 11. Um, yeah, you can't get breakfast anymore, but, you know. It's- I guess my... Uh- my yoga is included as part of my short rest, or my long rest. It is, yeah. Perfect, perfect. By noon, you are all back down in the uh, pub area. Daniel is still nowhere to be seen. Uh, we can hear him snoring, you said. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you can hear him snoring, but he's not downstairs oh, yet. Oh, yeah. So, uh, how long are we staying in town? I take it this is like around breakfast. Yeah. Quote, unquote, breakfast. It's around 11, there's no more it's breakfast. It's lunch. It's brunch. Yeah, it's it's lunch. Dawn's rich. He can get food whenever he wants. <laughs> We're all rich now. <laughs> if they're not serving breakfast, you're not getting breakfast. Then I will get magical takeout. Sure. <laughs> this this is far too complicated. Anyway. Anyways, yeah, you were asked a question, I think. What's the plan, or how long are we staying in town? That's what Marjorie asked. I have an invitation to see the dean of the local university at noon about our... Things we found in our last adventure. If you don't want to stick around, I can entirely understand that. Um, but I'm hoping to get access to the library. Ooh, library! Decla. Decla looks horrified. <laughs> it involved you. That's the only reason I'm wondering if you wanted to come along. Uh, I think you know about as much as I do. But you might know some, you know, odd bits and things about St. Bernard... That, that might be relevant, things that don't seem to make sense now, but in context might be more meaningful? Um, I don't I don't think St. Bernard is really relevant in any way other than just founding a monastery 
which I didn't also didn't know about. Yes, but he was he was supposed he supposedly founded the monastery to train people for the sunset. So maybe there are some hints in the training. Yeah, but I also I also wasn't there for a lot of the training. Oh yes, you did tell me that. Um, I I was thinking more there may be references and phrases that you would know which would pass us by. But like I said, if you don't want to come, then that's entirely understandable. I mean, it depends on how good you are at scooping my brain out. <laughs> um, from the from the reaction, Marjorie certainly seems interested. Um, have you have you been to this university's library before, Marjorie? I don't know. I'm gonna say yes. Oh yes, apparently. It might have been a while ago, but uh, yeah. But two hundred years ago, I went on this this long road trip where I tried to visit every library in the country. Did you make it? I no. No. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it turned into a pub tour halfway through. I mean, there's probably some private libraries they wouldn't let you in. And also, you know, there's probably lots of libraries, including private libraries that like are in people's homes. This, this strange prototype van I called a VW broke down after the sixth one, and I had to. Well, stop. I, I I stopped because I needed to. Uh, I I just missed my 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 husband and wife so dearly, and I just couldn't stay away any longer. How endearing! That was the point. If you would like to come along, uh, we can try and catch you up on what we're doing, Kasni. Have you any interest? There's no reason why we all can't go. I, for for myself, have no plans. I... I'm the only one with the invitation would be the only limitation. Oh, yes, that's true. If you rock up with three other friends, it's on a mechanical chair. (laughs) I'm sorry, we're going to be travelling for for all time now with a clunky mechanical chair. (laughs) It just, like, wanders in behind us everywhere we go. (laughs) Well, I wander in on it everywhere we go. So, the library. Chasney, you're probably a bit more informed on the uh, whole concept of what we're searching for. Would you like to catch Marjorie up? Um, I suppose so. And I would. I was gonna. Say, I was gonna say I. I. I do so, but then I realised that out of character. Uh, uh, I know nothing. Yeah. So yeah, you you do that. Uh, you do that as you're walking. <laughs> To the university, because um, she uh, she did say she did say in her office. So you're telling me you're not just a wandering bank robber crew? That's only part of our, our work. We 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 only ac- we sort of accidentally stumbled across a, a deeper and more important thing. And as much as I like money, um, the end of the world. I mean, it's it, I'm, I'm not up for that. Anyways, you reached uh, you reached uh, the university administration building where the dean's office is, uh, and Corel is already waiting for you outside. She says, "Dawn, you made it." Wouldn't miss it for the world. Who are your friends? I don't. Let me introduce. Uh, this lovely specimen is Kasni, and this other lovely specimen is <sighs> mm, Marjorie. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Is a uh, Marjorie. To be fair, you only you've you've only only known her for less than a day. It, it's true. You barely register as sen- sapient to me. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No. Uh, that's just how Dawn is. I wouldn't take it personally. Well, uh, yeah. <laughs> Marjorie is a fantastic artificer. Better librarian, actually. Even better news. And this this is Corella, a very old friend of mine. Yeah, Corella is a silver dragonborn uh, woman. Um, she seems to be about Dawn's age. So, do dragonborns in this setting have tails? It's very important. <laughs> traditional dragonborns, I don't think do. No, traditionally they don't. Um, I'm gonna say the metallic ones don't. The uh, uh, chromatic ones do. That's fun. I like that. Okay, so she doesn't. Either way, um, Kasni um uh, goes up to her and um uh. Uh, uh, gestures uh, to, for for her to to give uh, him her hand, and if she if she does if she does he will uh, kiss it and uh, yeah yeah she does she uh, she reaches out her hand she, uh, how uh, yes uh, pleased to meet you and he smiles at her you as well uh, Dawn, Dawn gives uh, Corella um, what can you do eyes above Kasny's head <laughs> she she just smiles she apparently finds it charming. Although if it was if it was as if it was as unsmooth as I actually did it, 
<laughs> and I said, I suppose I could get away with that sort of like god awful Hugh Grant type of sort of weird stumbling charm. I, I think Casney's a lot smoother than you are. Oh, Casney is definitely a lot smoother than me. Yeah, so don't <laughs> worry about it. Good, good. Uh, so yeah, my aunt is waiting for you uh, up in her office. Uh, she she told me to. Uh... Oh, great. Uh, can my friends wait down here? I mean, are they going into the library as well? Can I? Can I? That's something you'll, you'll have to bring up with her. But I, I think it could be arranged. But I'm a member of the Guild of Librarians that I just made up. <laughs> oh, you are. Do you have your Do you have your guild card? Because then uh, that that might uh, may make this easier. She hasn't paid her dues for a few hundred years. <laughs> well, twenty years at least. Yeah, it's like out of date. Yeah, I pull I pull like a really expired card out from my bag. Yeah, well, fortunately, Corella does not know how uh, how uh, guild cards work. So, oh, amazing! Well, you should definitely de- present that to my aunt. Now, come with me, and uh, she leads you uh, into the building, um, up some stairs into the first floor, and uh, uh, she knocks she knocks on a large, uh, dark wooden door, uh, and you just uh, hear a voice say, uh, "Come in," and you walk in into this large. A uh, beautiful office. There's a dark wood uh, desk uh, next to a window, and uh, there's uh, several uh, seats uh, set up. There's one seat set up in uh, front of the desk currently, but uh, there are several more in the room, so uh, you can drag them to the desk if you want to. Um, there's like a green carpet on the floor. There's a cabinet showcasing va- various. Uh, uh, book books <laughs> next to the like it's not it's not a bookcase it's like you know fancier than that so several uh, books and uh, some random um, I don't want to say artifacts because that means actually something in this world but you know f- fetishes trinkets items yeah trinkets artifacts but like valuable things I guess fancy I don't know. stuff and there is a uh, antiques uh, antiques various antiques. And there, there's a large uh, painting on the of uh, a group of heroes defeating a black dragon. Uh, do I recognize that legend, or do I recognize that the event it depicts? Roll history, or roll or religion. All three of you can do that if you want. Sure. Nine, not that good. No. Nah. Twelve. Twenty-four. Oh yeah, Marjorie, you know, you know exactly. You know the details about this event. It's. Uh, it's the party of Saint Yuri, also known as Saint George, who uh, defeated the uh, uh, black dragon uh, that used to live in the swamp near here. Interesting. Well, I'm keeping that to myself unless anyone asks. So, Casny also recognizes this as the legend of Saint Yuri, but you don't know all the details about it. Dawn, you have no reference for this, so it's not your culture. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and it, at the at the large uh, dark wood desk, uh, you see sitting. Lucy sitting in uh, sort of uh, uh, blue and white robes. There's a golden dragonborn woman, and uh, she's sitting there, uh, deadpan, staring at you. Welcome, Dawn, I presume. Indeed. Dawn steps forward and goes, um, Dean Aranka, I am indeed Dawn. It is a pleasure to meet you. I hope uh, Corella hasn't bespurched my name too much. Well, if you're one of her friends, I'm willing to look past some of the things I've heard. She, uh... <laughs> That was in character. Casney <laughs> <laughs> uh, covers his mouth after that outburst. <laughs> she did say you were a you were a good student, and she made a case for you to be allowed into our library. The library is uh, meant only for the members of the university, but if you can make a case for it, I would be allowed to extend the permission to you as well. And uh, your party, I assume, would are here uh, for that reason as well? Uh, if entirely possible, if it, the inv- invitation applies only to me, I also understand. Um, of course, our friend here, and uh, Kasny will point to... So- sorry for interrupting. Of course, our, fr- our friend here, um, Marjorie, um, uh, is herself a librarian. Hello! And I, I uh, put up my expired card on the desk. Ah, uh, yeah, I see. I see it's been a while since you are a member of the Librarian's Guild, but... Well, I'm retired now. Yes, I can. I I can tell <laughs> from the 
From, I can tell from the card, yes. Okay, Marjorie squints at that remark, but uh, go on. Yeah, well, you know, she was... I, I said it weirdly because I didn't know what I wanted to <laughs> okay. say, but like, yes, I can tell from the card. Uh, let me make uh, introductions. Um, this uh, here is Kasni, and uh, this is Marjorie. Kasni, Marjorie. Sorry, they lack propriety, and Dord gives um, Kasni a hard glare. And Kasni uh, gives uh, Aranka the most charming of smiles. She just blinks at you. <laughs> now, the reason we're here. What's your academic credit? Why should you be allowed in the library? Dear God, what is my academic credit? Um, you are an you are an archaeology student. Yeah, I am an archaeology student from the University of Tarish, um, and I came across, well, quite frankly, I came across something which shouldn't have been there. Mm-hmm. It was a temple of the saints, but in an area it should not have been. Right. And during the course of investigating this temple, we, my companions and I, um, discovered uh, fragments of a prophecy. And I was hoping that um, we, using the vast repertoire of knowledge that you hold here, we'll be able to gain some more insight into it. It's not something I've ever come across before, and although I fully admit that my knowledge is not as vast as many out there Mm -hmm. i found it very strange there were too many too many things were not where they should have been which makes it fascinating right you are being very vague so your purpose for visiting is to to look up about this temple you found this is a magic university does do you have reason to believe that this temple has something to do with the well, it involves a prophecy about the end of the world. Right. You say you're a student of the University of Tarish. Huh? Do you have any proof of that? Do you have someone who can vouch for you? Well, Corella. <laughs> yes, well, as much as I love and trust my uh, niece, I, uh, she's not above lying to uh, help her friends. Is she in the room? <laughs> she is. <laughs> She, Kasni, she, Kasni she, she is, and she just shyly looks away. Like there's obviously a story behind there. Like uh, the the dean gives a pointed look at uh, Carella, and Carella just sort of shyly looks away. Kasni, uh, if Kasni can catch her eye, he gives her a very sympathetic kind of look, and she just uh, Carella just raises her eyebrows at you, kind of. Um, would Dawn have any sort of like? Do they have university cards or anything like that? Uh, student IDs? I don't imagine so. Well, you you might for the discounts, but since, you know, uh, would Don even be looking for discounts? No. <laughs> no. If Don wants something discounted, he just nicks it. Um, I could tell her the names of teachers. I could describe layouts of you can, the place. You can, you can tell her the names of teachers You from your uh, experience. That seems to be... Uh, that seems to work. Uh, well, I studied under Professor... Katya. Uh, oh, yeah, that was it. Um, I studied under Professor Katya. Um... Ah, yes, Katya, Katya Levin, I remember her from... Yes, hold on, hold on, give me just a second, and you see her, she uh, casts a spell. She seems to be casting a message spell. And you wait there for a minute. She kind of nods. Mm-hmm. Yes, I have uh, confirmed with Katya that you are indeed one of her students. Uh, I'd like to flatter myself and think I'm not even a bad one. Yeah, she she mentioned that you were nothing special, but... <laughs> <sighs> she wounds me. You weren't one of her best ones, but, uh, if, but you seem to have a genuine uh, thirst for knowledge. Which makes me a little more inclined to uh, allow your permission into the library. My pride can take a little just to get entrance. But here is the thing. Since this library is uh, open to the members of of our university for the purpose of research, what de- benefit would there be for this university to let you inside? I can give you the location of the temple and you could send a full uh, expedition, which would be far greater than my cursory glance ever could. 
Um, if not only for the recognition, uh, you could also get the uh, influx of funding and the attention of many uh, great names, I'm sure. Uh, make a name for yourself as the dean who uh, discovered all these things. It is an incredibly old temple. You're going to let her take the glory? Oh my god. D- Dawn cannot... doesn't care about the glory. He cares about the knowledge. Fair. <laughs> and Dawn will basically point out all the advantages for her. Um, no, I want to I wanna hear them. It affects the DC. The Dean who... Uh, so, sorry, going out. What was the cool bit about the temple? It was the fact that all the saints were their older depictions... It, it seemed to be the old gods. Yeah, it seemed to be the old gods, and it was somewhere where it shouldn't be. I mean, not not specifically. It was just in the middle of the forest. Lots of lost buildings in this country. Oh, I thought there was something unusual about where it was. Like, you would have expected to find it up in the mountains or something like that. Oh, well, I guess, because it was, a, like, St. Saint, Saint Bernard was a mountain saint. Well, the... Temple itself is dedicated to the old gods, um, and there are statues there of them. Hmm. There was a desecration on the top level, um, and also that it's in the middle of the forest. Um, the prime dedicant to the temple, uh, the one that's now called St. Bernard, um, is, as far as I am told, a alpine uh, deity... Uh, Dawn looks slightly confused as to the terminology of this um, <laughs> before he sort of pulls it back and goes. And to uh, be the dean of the university that spearheaded the uh, excavation and uh, cataloging of such a site, I would think that would be of great uh, benefit to the prestige of the university, with your name at the helm, of course. You know, at this point, I want to make you roll a persuasion. Okay. 23. Well, this is a magic university. Archaeology is not really something we do. However, I do believe this might be an opportunity uh, to re- reconnect with the archaeology department at the University of Tarish. So I will take the student to account. As for the other members of the party, what, what did they bring to the table in this? I believe that um, Marjorie here being a... Uh... Familiar with more familiar with the library will be able to speed our uh, research and thus get out of your hair quicker. And um, OC, uh, do I know Cassidy's a cleric? I mean, you know he's a cleric. I don't know if you know what it what it what he's of. I mean, if you do know what he is worshiping, then it's definitely changed every single session. <laughs> <laughs> um, and my friend. Cassidy here has some training in the clerical arts, and I'm hoping that his knowledge and invaluable insight will also speed along the process. You could uh, study my chair while I'm here, if that helps. I bet you haven't seen any of these babies before. Just, uh, that, that's okay, we have our own uh, artifice, de- artifice department. Uh, I believe your design is uh, based on something uh, similar to what one of our alumni came up with. I, what? I think no, that's fine. No, it's, it's an original design. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't roll me another persuasion to get these two fools in, in as well. Uh, that was only 11 plus 4 is... 15? Fif- yes. Yes. She, uh, she kind of squints at the t- between the two of them. All right then. Uh, she takes a paper and she uh, she she signs it uh, and she gives it the paper. This paper will uh, allow you access to our library. It's a it's a one time access. Use it or lose it. If you need to access the library again in the future, you will need you will need to uh, apply for the permission again. I hope your research brings you what you're looking for. Thank you for your uh, generosity, Dean. Um, and it was a pleasure to meet some of my uh, friend's extended uh, family. Anyway, we'll, we will get out your hair. Uh, scales. Uh, frills. Um, <laughs> I sort of just usher everyone off towards the door. <gasps> I mean, he's a tobacco, so maybe he says, we'll get out of your fur. <laughs> Actually, yeah, that's a good point. Um, yeah, we'll uh, get out of your fur. All right. Have a good rest of your day. 
You too. I sincerely hope that the um, expedition turns up uh, something interesting, and uh, I hope to read about it. It's something I will have to uh, contact my uh, peers at uh, the University of Tarish. The Their archaeology department is uh, one of the lead ones in the territories, so... Uh, and with that, we make our way off to the library. Yeah, library is um, across the street from the um, administration building. And yeah, you uh, are led into the library. You, uh, yeah, it's a three-story building uh, made of uh, red and uh, red and gray stone. Um, and uh, on the bottom floor, it barely has any windows. But the further up it goes, the more uh, windows. There are, and as you step inside, there's a, a front desk where a youngish human, uh, youngish human man sits. Uh, looks to be his late twenties, maybe may, maybe around thirty. We saunter in, flash our uh, scroll. Yeah, and uh, he he's he's wearing like uh, brown brown robes, and he's got short brown hair and really thick glasses. Uh, and he seems uh, kind of excited. Oh, you're not from the university. That's rare. Uh, you must have really impressed Dean. Uh, come on, come along. Let me let me show you around. And he seems really excited. Uh, and he steps from behind the desk and uh, uh, leads you up the stairs. Um, the bottom floor where you uh, come into the building is kind of heavy and suffocated, but uh, there's a large staircase leading up to the next floor, and it opens up into this huge space supported with the pillars. There's a gallery around the the next floor. In the middle of the space is a huge um, study space like with lots of uh, tables and chairs around them. And there are a few stu- students here. They... They're just sort of, you know, keeping to themselves. Uh, they uh, r- lift their heads to look what's going on when the loud mechanical chair starts, uh, uh, just sort of stomps, stomps <laughs> in. Did we bring Cherry with I'm us? bringing Cherry wherever I go. It's my main mode of mobility. Yeah. And uh, the librarian says, well, uh, miss, if it's all right, I don't... Uh... I'm sorry? Are you trying? I speak up. I can't hear you, dear. Yeah, he he is kind of shy, a little bit slurry. Um, if it's all right, could I ask you to uh have the chair wait here uh, by the entrance? Uh, it's it just uh, we we don't want to disturb the other students. I uh, I understand if that's an issue, but uh, Marjorie pr- pretends like she still can't hear him and just walks in anyway <laughs> with the chair. I mean, you're you're in already. Oh, my, I, I I'm I'm am sorry that I'm I'm sorry that um I'm afraid she really does need that uh, device to help her get around. You know um and I'll always whisper, she's very old. She tires easily. I promise he won't eat anyone. Well, I <laughs> don't say that. <laughs> you don't say that. Okay, uh, roll me roll me a persuasion. Uh. <sighs> well, that's seven. I rolled a three. <laughs> oh yeah, that was not good. He kind of looks uh, at Marjorie and at the chair, and says, "Well, I don't, I don't want to deny her uh, access, but um, we, we, you also have to think about other patrons. Um, let me think. Let me think. Um, is there another way we could um, do this?" Um, but according to the Citizens with Disabilities Act, you're required to offer the uh, all help necessary to uh, allow people to uh, of of any abilities to use your facilities. It's uh, it's okay, Cassie. No, I'll, that's that's true. And- I'll 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 walk there. It's I'll just have to be in bed rest for the next week or so. It'll be fine. Make a bed, make a guilt uh guilt persuasion <laughs> yeah, a, like a guilt trip persuasion. <laughs> Yeah, you're about to make a guilt persuasion and you just hear a, a voice yell out. Hey, meet ya. Stop harassing an old lady and help her get around. And uh, an old lady, an old orc lady, old half-orc lady, e- even older than Decla, walks from behind a bookshelf. And says, I'm, I'm sorry, miss, he's new. He's uh, still getting uh, used to being here. Oh, that's quite all right. You seem somewhat familiar. Have we met? Uh, Did we meet at the librarian seminar and and Tarish? Uh, oh, it must have been a while ago. 
I, I was I was a young woman then. It's very likely. I've been a librarian for near on two hundred years, so yes. And those those terror seminars they they tend to get out of hand. What what's your name? Uh, my name uh, is Katerina, and she uh, she gives you uh, her hand. Well, Katerina, it's very nice to meet you, and I, I shake her hand. You as well. You as well. Well, welcome to the library. Uh, if there's anything I can do to help, just. Say so, and uh, if this young weasel annoys you, just uh, hit him with your cane. Yeah, just uh, just poke him with a cane. And he he responds well to it. <laughs> <laughs> We'll do. Yeah, and uh, that's uh, that's kind of where uh, I want to end this episode. We pan over to the back to the tavern where Decla is uh, waiting on Daniel. So Decla, where are you? To begin with, she would be in the corridor watching his uh, bedroom door, um, and then we'll watch from a distance as long as she can, unless Daniel tries to to, tries to uh, grab her. Yeah. So you are uh, standing there for oof, quite a while. Your uh, friends have been gone have been gone for like. At least an hour, possibly more, by now, and uh, the the saw the sawmill snoring uh, eventually stops. You don't really hear another sound coming from the room. Okay, I guess I will continue waiting. You wait for a little while, and you start getting worried. Like, what if something happened? But after a while, the you hear a rustling in the room, and the door opens. And Daniel's standing there wearing nothing but a towel. Good. And uh, his chest, his chest is hairy, <laughs> and he he looks like a wreck. I mean, he always looks like a wreck. I mean, yes, but looks even like even more of a wreck. He is ugly, Hollywood dirty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, not even Hollywood dirty, just dirty. Oh God, he's the real Hollywood. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> a Hollywood dirty. He's just Hollywood. <laughs> and he looks up at you. Hey, you. Go, go get me some water or something, I don't know, or beer, I don't care. Already got you one. Okay. It's a bit warm, but here you go. Oh, nice. And he uh, takes it and just kind of drinks it and it pours all over him and he uh, tosses it against the wall. Oh, gross. What? <laughs> Pouring it all over himself. Yeah. Ah. Uh. I mean, imagine, imagine doing that first thing in the morning. You just get yourself covered in alcohol. <laughs> God damn. Uh, I mean, I mean, he he is wearing only a towel. So was it a beer you gave him? I assumed it was water. No, it was a beer. Yeah, you weren't clear on it. No, I'd give him a beer. I would have, I would have had one from the bar. Yeah, he uh, he drinks uh, he drinks from the um, mug and he tosses it against the wall. Oh Jesus! What I'm gonna go. Take a bath. Mm-hmm. Let me know if you need anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then... Then we go get my money. Yep. Yep. Great. Can you go get me another beer? Sure. And he... And yeah, and you go away and he just stumbles towards the... There's like a bathroom at the uh, end of the hallway. He... Uh, you just hear, you hear him yell at someone who's in there already to get out. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll get him a new beer, but then I will uh, put a shot of moonshine in it. <laughs> He'll probably appreciate that. I wouldn't try and hide that. Yeah, tell him tell him you did it. He'll probably thank you. <laughs> Declan's not very talkative anyway, so she'll probably just do it. Fair. Yeah, and eventually he gets out of the bath, and uh, he like you wait like you're waiting for him a while. The beer gets warm again. Tecla is extremely patient, mainly because her brain is just, like, constant nothingness. It's just the sound of, like, wind on the empty plane. <laughs> Tecla is truly the most zen of all of us. Indeed. That's kind of her deal. He walks out of the bathroom eventually with his, uh, with the towel wrapped around his, uh, hair and, uh, you know, he only had one towel. No, oh, no. Such a little man. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even that cold in here. 
<laughs> I mean, he just could have hot showers or baths, so. <laughs> Yeah, and he he uh, he just takes the beer from you, downs it in one take, tosses the mug against the wall again, and says, "Okay, bitch, better have my money." Dice Out Now Game is a 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons actual play podcast. Our intro and outro music is Bells by Fake Cats Project. If you want to get in touch with us, you can find us at Dice Out Now Game on Twitter, where you will also find links to our personal accounts. Dice Out Now Game is a part of Be Gay Roll Dice, a podcast network for actual play podcasts made by LGBT folk. Follow them on Twitter at Be Gay Roll Dice and check out other wonderful shows on the network. If you can, please rate and review our podcast and tell your friends about us. Now, game, game, game. Be gay. Roll dice. An LGBTQIA actual play podcast network.